Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to continue working on the Lego Zoo, specifically the common area in the center here. The animal habitats are looking pretty good, nice and colorful. The center area, not so much, just gray plates. So it's time to change that up. There are definitely lots of different things that we're gonna be doing in this area. And I've been talking about adding a pond for quite some time. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna build here today. Now this pond is actually gonna be inset into the mills plate. So I have to remove all the plate and the underlying brick, and then I can start to build the border for the pond. I've decided that the pond is gonna be very simple and there's not gonna be a whole lot of, actually there's not gonna be any grass or plants or anything. And so once I got the mills plate all carved out there, I put an underlying rectangular border and then on top of the rectangular border, I can add the rounded one. I find this actually fills in the studs on the edges of it just a little bit better. Now I've put some black plates down. This is gonna be the base layer for the water. And then I've started using some arches here because I want there to be a bridge going over top of the ponds so guests of the zoo can get a good viewpoint. Of course, it's easier to construct these things when I'm by the parts. So I've decided to finish constructing the bridge at my desk here. Now you will see the camera jitter once in a while. That's because I'm turning the camera on and turning the camera off as I run back and forth to my part bins, specifically when the camera's in the Lego City. I have to do that quite frequently and it's a little bit of a longer trip. So I wanna make sure the camera's not recording and I'm not using a stable tripod because there's not room for a big tripod over there. Either way, we're building this bridge using arches, masonry bricks, cylinders, also some connection elements with some tiles and plates and curved slopes. After I get the bridge created, I just wanna test fit it, make sure it's gonna work in our pond, and it does. And of course, I don't want black plates to be our water, so I'm gonna add some of those transparent blue tiles just to make it look more like water. Now, like I said, I don't wanna to go too crazy here. I think less is more. We're gonna have some fish jumping out of the water on either side of the bridge. I'm also gonna put one underneath the bridge. And then the rest of the area is just gonna be tiled off. However, where the fish are jumping out, I've used some of those dark transparent blue pieces just to give a little bit of a ripple effect in the water. Now, one thing I wish I had is actually some of those modified transparent blue tiles with the koi fish on them. That would be really neat. I might have to order those sometime. I put the bridge in there, it's looking pretty good. It's time to add a border going around the pond using tiles and also some gold one by one studs that matches the look of the raised walkway in the other section of the zoo. That's sort of what I was envisioning for the pond with the bridge. Now when you come in the zoo, you've got an option. You can go left toward these animals over here. You can go right toward these animals over here in the aviary, or you can go right over the bridge, check out some of the fish, and then head to the aquarium. Now that's not enough color. We've got to add some more color to this gray area. So let's continue building. So essentially, I eventually want this entire area to be tiled off. But the first thing I gotta do is destroy my ramp and then put some more green plates in because the green plates represent grass and I don't wanna just stick those green plates on top because I think it needs to be built into the mills plate. So I've gotta extract some of the gray plates. You'll see me using a razor blade sometimes. Yep, uh, just an easier way to get in there. I don't have to move the mills plate because at this point they're not movable. I also put a little yellow bench there and now I'm starting to tile the surrounding area using some of those awesome shield tiles that I found on the pad wall. Those are in light gray. I'm gonna fill in the space around those in dark gray. I'm using those one by twos that I also found on the pad wall and I'm alternating them, sort of like a checkerboard style between the available spaces. And I think it looks pretty good. I decided to go with two sidewalks there. You can see it better from this angle. I don't know if I should have done that because maybe those sidewalks are too narrow. I don't know yet. This could change, that's the thing, right? It's, it could all change because we've got a lot more stuff that we need to add to this area, but I wanted to start adding some color and some tiles and getting rid of some of those studs and getting rid of some of that gray. So we're adding more grass. I also started adding a border going around all of those tiles and also around the pond. As you can see, I changed up my time-lapse style. I'm filming this in real time and then I just sped it up using my software. Before it was a little bit more choppy because I was taking pictures every five seconds, but when we're doing uh, Lego City work, sometimes it's better to do it in real time and then just speed it up like I am now. 
Now I experimented with all sorts of different stuff going around these benches, both on and off camera. I'm doing some experimenting right now with the leaf elements. Not sure how it looks. I think I want to add taller trees to that area. Also tried some squiggly line tiles. Uh, making the way back to the aviary, that's probably going to change as well. But I know for sure all of this area here is going to be different colors, tiled off nicely. There's going to be food vendors. There's going to be all sorts of interesting stuff. To be honest, I'm having a little bit of a hard time visualizing exactly where I'm going with this. I don't know if I should be tiling it all off in smooth tiles with different colors. I don't know where my food vendors are going to go, where my souvenir stands are going to go if I'm going to put bathrooms in, or if the grass should be how I made it at Mills plate height, or if it should actually come off the plate like these plates here. So I just really don't know what to do. I've got to think about it. Like this is uh, becoming rather challenging for me because it's a lot of work to get it all done. And then to change it all again would be also a lot of work. So before I tile it all off and do all that, I've got to sort of figure out where all our food stands and vendors are going to go. I'm also not sure if I like the shield tile pattern. I think it looks good, but I don't know if I should have made two different pathways here. My intention was people could come here, they could look and they could see the fish, they could sit on the bench, they could come this way as well, and then we'll put some bushes in the middle here. I was also experimenting with different bush types, but Four studs isn't much to work with, and I can't have trees with uh, low limbs. Like I can't put this here because that's... Well, I guess I could technically put that there. That might work if I build trees like that and have them right there. Maybe not that tall, but hey, actually that does work. Maybe we'll put trees there. And then I can put uh, a bunch of these leaf elements like these here around the base of it. And we can do different sizes of trees. Hey, that looked pretty cool actually. And then maybe we can put some hedges here. And then I've got to tile all this area off and also tile off underneath that curved viewway there or viewpoint. And then this angled one as well because I want to tile off in here and get rid of these uh, dark gray studs. I might do this area in light gray. I was thinking about light gray. Maybe a food vendor right there. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like I've got some tough decisions to make here. And that's part of the reason why I don't do time lapses of Lego City very often just because I change my mind so often. So the time lapse just for the most part doesn't come out exactly how it should or how I visualized it happening because I don't know I might come through and just change all this now even though we just filmed a time lapse on it. I'm gonna do something that I know needs to be done 100% and that is the tiling underneath the angled viewpoint here that's looking into the bare enclosure. And you know what, while I was doing this, I think I've come up with some solutions for some of the other areas as well. So like I mentioned, I've got to undo a bunch of work because I'm not a huge fan of those two narrow paths. And I've come up with a better idea involving those shield tiles and those dark gray one by two tiles. Rather than them just being on the sides, so you're gonna go around the entire pond and frame it really nicely. I've actually done this exact same thing recently with the fountain, which is right outside of the amusement park. But rather than using the dark gray tiles, I used uh, dark tan and dark red. Adds a really nice pop of color. Now from this perspective here, you see those white doors on the back side of the entrance? There's little tiny spaces on either side of that. What is that, about, uh, I don't know, four by 10 or 12 suds roughly. Those two spots, because there's one on either side, are gonna be great for having vendors as well. Maybe like information booths and souvenir stands. So I think that's gonna be a really neat spot for those. And it's a little nook that I saw when I was doing this. And I was like, oh, that's perfect because it's not obstructing the walkway or anything like that. Now, before this clip ends, take a look because I actually do some behind the scenes tiling as well. And there'll be one big change over there with all those gray tiles. They're more of like a diagonal angle now. And I'm still contemplating what colors we're gonna be doing those tiles. I'll discuss that once we're done doing what we're doing here. But I am laying down a bunch of one by four jumpers in dark gray, just so many figures have somewhere to stand. That's something else that we have to do as well, is I just have to go through and make sure there's enough jumpers everywhere and enough studs available. So those mini figures can you know, have a spot to stand or something to keep them upright. And you know what, the uh, bridge in the middle, it's light gray. I could change that to be a wooden bridge could make that reddish brown. It uses uh, 12 of the 
arches and I actually robbed the arches from the pad border that recently arrived. And those are supposed to go to the raised train track area, but I actually robbed them for this bridge here. So maybe I'll have to order some radish brown ones and rebuild that bridge in radish brown and then I can do like cylinders on the side. And that would actually add a nice pop of color, sort of break up the gray as well and would match the exterior fence and also would match the bridge which is inside the aviary. So right now I'm just wrapping up doing the monotonous job of tiling everything off using hundreds and hundreds of tiles. Behind the scenes, I've decided to make some more trees for the zoo and I made sure the base of those trees are six cylinders tall so that there's proper minifig clearance. They're not gonna hit their head on a branch or anything like that. Now there is some more available green space underneath those trees. I'm probably gonna go around with those leaves and put them there or maybe make some custom bushes like I did in the panther exhibit. There's one that almost looked like a hedge. I might do that as well. And then I probably am gonna add a bunch of leaves like the little tiny ones to the limb elements of these trees here just to make them look a little better. I like it so far, but it might be still too gray. I'm hoping when we add minifigures and more trees and also concession stands, it'll break up that gray a little bit. What I could do also is replace the dark gray tiles between the shield tiles with a different color. I actually have some really neat ones on order right now. They're just taking a little bit longer to ship because they weren't best pieces or whatever the heck it's called on uh, the LEGO website there. I've got some uh, earth blue ones coming. Replacing that with an earth blue color, it's like a dark blue, would look actually pretty good. And I might make that change when those tiles arrive. As you can see, uh, it looks pretty good though. I've got some of the same tiling that's found in other spots of the zoo going around the shield tiles. I'm not gonna tile off anymore because the next thing I have to do is create the concession stands. I think one of them is gonna go in the center right there. Then I think there's gonna be a mini one back there against the brown wall. Another mini one right back there against that brown wall. And then another larger style one right here in the corner. And then once those are installed, I'll be able to go through and finish tiling everything off. I think I'm gonna transition into some different colors of tiles. Now I had the ingots on this wall here. I might be changing these light gray tiles to the ingots or I'll be running the ingots over here. I can't decide whether or not I want the ingoted area to go over here, like it'll all be tan or if I want that to be all light gray or something completely different, or if I wanna make this light gray, or maybe I should just ingot the entire area because I actually have enough. And that would add a nice pop of tan color. Also, once we get those concession stands built and put into spot there, I'll be able to add some more grass areas, I hope. And then also I want to make this a different color as well, the entrance to the aquarium. And I also want to expand the polar bear exhibit. You can see I've actually left some space open right there, three studs, and then I'll probably bring it over maybe another two studs to the left there. So it'll be a decent uh, expansion for the polar bears, not as big as I want it to be, but it is what it is. I think it'll be fine if we give them that extra room there. Other things that I wanna add, uh, like a lot of people have suggested and like you actually see in my aquarium, are signs identifying the uh, animals that are in the habitats. You see that I did do that for the aquarium when I originally built that, and I do plan on doing that for all of the other animals here in the zoo. And I'm thinking about adding some covered areas here uh, on the raised walkway. Maybe we'll add some covered areas, I'm not sure. Uh, it'd be cool to get maybe some angled roofs on there, uh, just in certain areas. It might look pretty neat, but they might come up too high. Either way, I think we did a great job today with uh, building the pond and getting some tiles put into place here in the zoo and also adding these trees as well. It's coming along. I'm going to work on a new design for the concession stands and sort of go from there. So I look forward to continue building the zoo in the near future. Make sure you like, subscribe, and stay tuned.